I'm in Indianapolis and it's cold. Man, is it cold today. I'm here for the 2016 Performance Racing Industry Show or the PRI Show. I'm gonna go inside the convention center, check out some really cool transmission parts or some unusual stuff that I think you guys will like. But I'm also gonna to try to focus on super finishing techniques and shot peening techniques for gears because that is my business. And hopefully I'll get some good answers from people in the field to find out the pros and cons of super finishing, shot peening gears, and the burring. Maybe see some cool equipment, see what it's all about. Let's go. So you guys do the surface enhancement, right? And the shot painting of these gears. And you have your own equipment, you don't send it out. Because I know we send a lot of stuff to you guys mm -hmm. to get done. We, we have our own shot painter, but when we do these gears, mm -hmm. we do like huge quantities. And so we send them out. You do? We you have them, well, when we have them heat treated in the cryo, they do them at the same time. Do you think the cryo stuff is really adds something to Absolutely. it? Absolutely. You do? Yep. Compared to the, like say shot painting? So you've got cryo and shot peening? Mm -hmm. Cryo, so, heat treat, and shot peening. So the thing with the cryo, what I, what I was trying to understand is that a lot of times when I go to cryo places and I ask them something, and I say, well, so you got different alloys. It's like they never can really tell me, like, okay, what 8620 is going to yeah. react with or 9310. Yep. So that seems to be a problem. I can't seem to get a definite answer from them. That's what scares me about doing cryo, you know? The extreme. They almost look the same, but what's almost. the difference? This is a little beefier, a little, little wider. Oh, the, the gears are wider. Box. Yeah. This okay. And uh, 3,000 horsepower and like 3,600 pounds. Uh, so this can handle 3,000 horse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. With yeah. how much weight in the car? About 3,600. Right. And then. And I see you using very fat input shafts on these. Yeah. It's like engine three eighths, like the old. All the pro stock guys. So they're all running engine three eighths and ten spline, not like the twenty six spline stuff. Right? Like that. So you need to have this bigger spline. So it's funny because nobody ever thought of doing like an inch and uh, we three eighths by twenty six spline to even make it more stronger that they're using a square spline. It's 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 a very strong yeah, it's, it's, well, it's deep. This way here, right. We're not relying on anything. Just have a jack. And then the next step up from so that, bolts direct. So, you know, hold from oh, you, you, you're going to have that spacer, phone number, no okay. spacer, okay. no 4, or no cup work. Or more. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I see the gears are different. So this is the one that, if you're going yeah, to run a tooth profile, this is the one we want you to run. The... The thing with the cryo, mm -hmm. I bring my gears to you, I know they shot peed them and they surface enhance them. But how much extra do you think the cryo actually adds to it? Extra for integrity? Yeah, integrity and strength. It depends on the level of retained austenite. So we, we have no clue how the, the components were handled in heat treating and processing originally. All we know is that if there are any retained austenites, we can fix that. We also give you some core properties, some beneficial, some benefits to the core properties of the materials. But the biggest thing is the retained austenites. We can convert those to marketizers. So the thing is, when I the these people, we don't know. We don't know your 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 particular parts. So well, like if a person is like eighty six twenty or nine three ten, the typical gear alloys that are, that they're using. I know you're using some other fancy stuff. 
most of the people that do cryo, what they're really preaching is the core properties. I feel the retained austenite conversion is just as big, if not bigger. So, but since I don't know how your gears were handled to begin with for processing, all we know is that if there are any retained austenites, we're converting. And, and, that's and retained the austenites benefit. means what? Getting rid of it? Yeah, we're going to get rid of the retained austenites. Retained austenites are very unstable molecule that's inherent in heat treat. So, and what we're doing is converting them to martensites into a very stable molecule. So you find it definitely adds some integrity to the gears? Unquestionably, depending on that level. Now, depending on their parts, they, they could have been through a 120 degree Those ratios. deep phrase, maybe not a full 300, but they might have already went through a 120 degree. So maybe there are no retained austenites. Now we're still gaining core properties, unquestionably. So we are getting better core properties on the material, on anything we do. Because typically I send my gears to you, you guys peen them, and you have to enhance them. And I've had very good luck in that process. I've had very little breakage issues like in the road racing applications. But sometimes I'm getting guys break input shafts. And I, I don't know if the input shafts are breaking because poor clutch use or, you know. Because you'll have one guy have the same type of transmission in a higher horsepower car. And, you know, a high horsepower car, he's, he's basically taking a high horsepower car and actually, you know, fine three or four seasons, and I got one guy with a car that's maybe 100 horsepower less, breaking inputs constantly, and same process and everything. I don't know if that extra cryo stuff is gonna really help. It's definitely going to help, it's just we don't know to what level, depends right. again on the retained austenites and what material they're made with. Thanks, thanks yep. for the tip. I'll be speaking to you. This is a machinery row at PRI. It's probably the more industrial area. It's got a lot of uh, equipment, a lot of shop cleaning equipment, cleaning equipment, lathes, mills, welding equipment, cleaning tanks, you name it. What are you doing a 3D scan of, actually? What is this car? No, I'm sorry, why are you scanning that? Just to show what's so... Uh... Just to show the capability of the scanner. Yeah. We work with IndyCar as part of their technical inspection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll scan the aerodynamic this is called a roto finishing technique and notice how the part is kind of rotating around the media as it also is vibrating around it. Look at this beautiful header. Look how fine this media is. Look how fine this stuff is, right? Now this is the other little media balls and uh, wet solution in water. This is tub finishing with different media, drying media and wet media. This is vibratory finishing. And here we go with centrifugal finishing. So the parts in here are, this is pretty hot. I don't know why they like doing bullets. Everybody's finishing bullets over here. I don't know what that's about. So basically the parts just go in like this. It's nice and shiny. So this will fall in like that. Yeah, but if you get these here, it'll separate. Yeah. Yeah, the idea is the car is larger than the screen, so the media falls to the screen, the part stays there, goes into the next track. Same here, the media is small, media recovers, part goes out. What is this, like walnut shells? Or what is this, this is cab meal. What? Cab meal. Cob meal? What fresh, is fresh corn cob meal. Cob meal. Cob meal. Yeah, but the drying, it's used for drying. For drying. So what we're doing is obviously because I've got compound, I've got liquid in there, mm -hmm. the part's going to be wet. So all we're doing is once we do the finishing, it's going into the outer track. Just and dry. Yeah. Well, it just dries up. Uh -huh. Oh, so I see the whole there thing is going apart. All right. We won't get a lot of them. Right. All right, but now what you're going to see the part. See, the media is recovered, and the parts it are going into, before it goes into the next part. Parts are going into the next track. So it's a separator. It's a screen separator. So, so here's a perfect example of using different types of media shapes and sizes to finish a particular part. 
Look at this container now. I'm going to show you what's inside of it. Here you have a mixture of all sorts of different types of media. Small media, large media. So you're getting the nooks and crannies of these parts. So look at this, the way they go inside here. And they get into these little areas over here. You can look at the different sizes and shapes. So all these multiple sizes and shapes allow you to put all sorts of different parts in here. All sorts of irregular shapes. Look at this rod here. So although some of these may be for show, but this is actually how a lot of race axles or the ring and pinions are done. They're actually surface enhanced, shot peen, and polished like this to this high finish. Look at that. This cuts down on drag, makes the transmission gears and the rear end gears run smoother, run quieter, and also create less heat generation. Not when you start getting into the really thin stuff? Yes, there actually is a trump. There's a bunch of different ultrasonic cleaning tanks available for you to use when you do your parts. So usually people will clean parts after they machine them, get all the greases and oils off of them, and then deburm somehow, and then shop them, and super finish them. They really want to get it to something really cool. When you have a gear, for example, and you polish the surfaces of the teeth of the gear, you're going to have the ability for it to have more surface contact, because the little machining ridges that are in the gear will sometimes prevent the gear from making full contact with the other tooth. So by polishing the gears, you don't want to over polish them, so you ruin them. But if you do it correctly, you can increase the strength of the gear with shop heating, with uh, cryogenic treatment, and with surface enhancement. question I have for you is when is it how do you know when it's too much that you've taken off the gear well because we we have a perfilometer we'll check the roughness coming in mm -hmm. and then when we're, running, when we're trying to determine the process on a new part we'll pull it we'll shorten cycles right. until we get it to where we want it now I noticed it said over here that it's chemically accelerated yes okay now there are some people that say um, it shouldn't be chemically accelerated they would use water instead what is the pros and cons of that, do you, do you know? Well, the chemical acceleration shortens the cycle time and it gives you a better finish. It does. The, uh, so like obviously it increases your load bearing surface because everything's much more even, right? Yes. And, uh, and then we're going to go put this coating on here, yes. which is the DLC coatings. Yes. Which you said the hardness goes to how much in Vickers? Uh, it can go up to 2,400 Vickers. Right. So, it can go more. So the process is that we have to do this here after we do that over there. Okay. Yes. Right, okay, got it. That's the process. A lower coefficient of friction with this part, and then we can run lighter weight oils, which will also help produce more horsepower to the rear wheels. And you'll get better, better, uh, less parasitic load on the drive. So, what is this? You put this finish on the parts? Yes, uh, before, after, mm -hmm. we made a beam pool on the surface. Okay, like, like a, a bulk wall. Mm -hmm. So, those beam pools can contain the Right. Here. In this line. But, uh, Interesting. Like a camshaft and right. puppet. But the dimples are so microscopic it doesn't matter? Yeah. So it doesn't change the, any, uh, the dimension. Mm -hmm. There's no additional material. Is this like a shot peening type of yes, effect? Correct. Yes, correct. Right. But uh, we are using the very fine media like a powder mm -hmm. they soak with uh, high speed gas. Right. So this gear is done in the same process. So like a titanium, very hard material. Aluminum, kind of hard material. And for the bearings, very soft material. Because there is a soft layer. Does it add any strength to the part as well because you're peening it? Okay. And hard peening. So peelings, right. Our treatment is like this. But not only the surface, like a 20, 30 micron harder inside. Okay. So this is regular, regular shot hard peening. Yeah. Okay. This is a normal, uh, un untreated right. shot peen. 
Which is the untreated uh, one? Untreated one. Above this one, this one. Yes. So you have a very interesting curve. It's almost inverse uh -huh. than the other one. Yes. So why is it initially harder in the beginning and then falls off? Yeah, because the uh, our media has a very small. Um, I see. Like a, this shot pinning has a very uh, heavier, like a uh, steel ball. That's why, that's why the, the very surface very hard. And inside, get the benefit of the the shot pinning. Yes. But also you get better a coefficient of friction. Yes. Right. Very interesting. Very interesting. Like, and they come out with a beautiful finish too. They look nice too. Look yes. Nice. Yes. Thank you. It can take more compress compressive stress. Exactly. Right. It prevents the heat cracking or bending cracking. Well, in gears, mainly for me, it's gears. I do yes. with gears, so yes. gears. it would be stress cracking on the roots. Chipping. Yes. Chipping. And usually, typical the gears like they'll break along the roots down here. They'll start to crack right over here. It's like uh -huh. one opinion. It'll start to peel away over here, right on this edge over here down yes. here. Unbelievable. Very nice. It's in the box, though. <laughs> That's very cool. With the jack, too. With the jack and the plate. Very cool. And it's from Florida. That's where I'm from. That's a pretty cool car, huh? From Hawk. I really like that. A little old Cortina. Okay, so I'm here with the guys from Rem. And you're... I'm Mike. Mike, Justin, Justin and Jim. Terry. Okay, these are the guys that invented surface finishing. REM stands for Research Engineering Manufacturing. Manufacturing. A lot of stuff about this is the fact that a lot of times they use this name all the time, which I hate. And I say, oh yeah, I need to get my gears rimmed. Mm -hmm. And I must drive you guys crazy because everybody's saying, yeah, we do, we rem your gear, we'll rem your gears for you. And these were actually the people that started the whole thing. So if you want to get your gears rimmed, go to REM. And nobody, one of their dealers that sells their equipment. Now, what's unique about your process is that you have, like, it's a chemical accelerated process, right? Yes, chemical mechanical process that allows us to refine the surface of the components without removing too much material. Our biggest benefit is, is that we impart a texture on the surface that allows the oil to adhere to it. That gives you better lubrication performance, lower operating temperatures, better durability for your components. Then say somebody who's running gears through a machine uh, with just a water-based abrasive? Uh, that you will not achieve the same surface finish we do. We have a lot of competitors out there right now that make a bright part. Everybody thinks a bright part is a REM part, and it's right. not. It's right. the surface texture that we impart on the surface that allows us to give you Exactly, form. like that. And also, what I wanted to ask was, when it comes to doing these types of parts in general, is there a point where you can actually ruin the part? Like because you see everybody doing this type of, 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 of you know, operation, mm -hmm. how do you know they're actually not weakening the part? It won't weaken it, it'll take it out of tolerance if you run it too long. And you notice that by when you go to set up your rear ends, you'll see that your, your uh, setup pattern's off or you have too much play in your pinion shafts, depending on you know uh, what types of materials that uh, uh, people are working with. So I see sometimes you look at some gears that are done and you can actually see the machine marks still in the gears, which is okay, and the others they're completely obliterated and gone and so smooth that I wonder if they take too much off. That is correct. Because if you if you got a tooth, you know, and you can actually see sometimes the lathe marks, those are pretty deep on the outside. So to take that off completely, you've removed a lot of material already. That's correct. You know, so I don't think that sometimes that's a good thing to do. We, we, take, we take all of the gears to about a 4RA. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much standard uh, for our process right now. We have certain teams that want to go even lower. Uh, bearing races like these we bring to a sub-1 finish. Wow. That's very specific. It's a very um, high dollar, high performance team that uh, requires that. What is this bearing race for? Like a, a heim joint or something, or it's like a? It's, um, like it's, a... it's for a. Uh... Go ahead. 
You know, just <laughs> oh no, it looks like to me like a, one of those spherical bearings. That's why. I, yeah, I, it's I, a spherical. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. 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 I see these like dog rings for transmission that yes, are all done. That's out of a human one. Now, why would there be an advantage to actually rimming dog rings? I mean, because there's no real. When when you do a transmission, mm -hmm. why leave half the pieces out? Why do you wash only half your pants? No, it's true. Okay. Or wash them at all. Well, that's it. I mean, you don't want to wash one leg, right? You don't want to wash both. So if you have rim parts and non rim parts, when they come into contact, you'll get a lot of debris breaking off. And well, that connects like a sandpaper effect then, because right. right. basically you have you have a rough part against the smooth part, and it's like sanding the part then. That is correct. Okay. Now, tell me about this uh, ISF, the uh, uh, isotropic super finish uh, that's black. Our, that's our trademark, right. and basically it means a non-directional surface. And this is a, this is a great uh, showcase for us. This is an unfinished differential, and this is a finished differential. If you turn them, you'll see the friction reduction on it. And no, we haven't done anything to make that feel any way but the way, uh, but the way a stock one would. Amazing. That's, if you buy it out of the box, that's the way it's going to be. You put it in, it's going to have a little bit of oil on it, it's going to turn. But right there you can see that there's a, a, a lot more friction on that. There's, there's definitely an improved difference here. So, now what's different about this finish than, let's say, the high-end well, what we finish. have is we have two we have two types of finishes. We have Rem and then Rem Black. Okay. And Rem Black is was developed for a uh, specific application. It actually looks like a sponge if you were to put this under a microscope and holds lubrication in there. It's not a hard coating; it's a soft coating. Does it come off then? No. Um, it will come off, but you'll still have lubrication values there. If you were to have a, a full oil loss situation and you needed a vehicle to get to a safe zone or get out of danger, mm -hmm. you'd have enough oil left in the transmission for that to happen. Got it. Uh, we've got a lot of customers. We have motorcycle guys that love running this because they run less oil mm -hmm. in their bikes. We have off-road guys that like it because they want the more durability out of it. So the whole trick of this thing is like they're trying to kind of bring the oils levels down to get less parasitic drag and, and, uh, and right. they run thinner viscosity oils and try to like cheat as much as you can and get a little bit more horsepower to the real wheels. Yes. Right. I see. Right. And this is another nice piece here. So again, it's not how pretty and shiny to look. It's actually what the surface finish is and how uniform the surface finish is. And the reason why all of our parts are bright is because we remove the imperfections and light reflects off smooth parts. Now I see some pieces, you know, people do them and they don't get down to the root of the gear all the way down to the middle of the tooth. That is, that is correct. And you know. That's choosing the right type of, and it's called media in our right. process. They have all different shapes and size media. That's right. correct. Right. So, you get, so you really kind of have to analyze the product and say, what media do I need to use mm -hmm. so that it fits into all the nooks and crannies because all these individual shapes, this is going to take a different size media than this will because obviously this has got a bigger tooth profile. You need, and something this small, you know, is good for this, but it, will, it may not get into this or something like that. that. Is correct. That's the boys from REM. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. These guys were awesome. Right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank I you appreciate much. it. Have a great day. Yes, Driven does have a GL4 oil now. You can get it on my website. Coming shortly. Lamborghini and Audi R8 six speed. Look at this baby. Obviously it's standing on ends. Look at the diff way it is. Yeah. That cool or what? This is a sequential box. Look at the dog rings in this one. Notice that the dogs are machined, they're part of the gear. You see that over there? And notice how thin these sliders are to conserve space. So it's very quick movement from front to back. Not that much movement at all in the shift linkage. If any of you are wondering how a sequential box works, the it's like a motorcycle. The fork lugs ride on a rotary rail. And this rotary rail moves the forks in a pattern across it like that. So as the rail rotates, 
you convert rotational movement into a lever movement. So a lever is rotating this shaft, which is tracking these shift fork lugs in a linear fashion. And that's how you get your sequential boxes to work. They call this a shift barrel. It's, just look at the billet work here on this. It's amazing, huh? This is a transmission and a transaxle, and they're combined by a shaft in the middle of the car. So this is a tripod axle fits. Tripod, there's an axle. That's crazy. Look at that. Wow. Yep. Look at that. And then with this axle and that assembly, you can run up to 15 degrees. Wow. Yeah. So it's basically like an independent rear almost. I want to see. Do you think their brakes are inboard, or do you think their brakes are outboard? Uh, on this assembly, the brakes were outboard. They're outboard. We have had some with the brakes inboard. Yes. Right. I think so. It's a work of art. Thanks a lot, Tom. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Okay. So your, your company, Surface Finishes, does uh, lapping and surface finishing in all different types of materials. But what's very cool here, this is an air bearing. And spin, spin that for me. So it runs on air. And the only reason that has the ability to spin, you said 40,000 RPM? Yeah. Like that is because you actually polish and lap the surfaces on both the ID of the cylinder and the OD of the piston, whatever that is. Exactly. That's amazing. And this is uh, from a satellite dish for a... This or, is actually or a, a, mirror a mirror for a satellite. Silicon carbide, lightweighted. And 80,000 stick, you said it was? 80,000 stick. Right. And these are so shiny. And, this, and what is this? Sapphire. Sapphire. Semiconductor grade sapphire. Hey, I thought you'd like to really see something very cool. I just never really noticed, like on valve springs, the size lift of the valve springs. You know, typically, like a lot of engines, small block Chevys we deal with, big block Chevys, you get to talk about a half inch lift on the can. Uh, these are top fuel alcohol springs that have a one inch lift on the valve. But I want to show you the size of the springs. It's just something I thought was interesting. So look at this, you got this one spring here. It's got a one inch lift for alcohol fuel pro mod car. Look at the size of that spring. Uncompressed. Look at these things. This one here, 800 lift, okay? Look as we go all the way down. It's like say 640 lift. Look how tiny they get. 650 on the Honda. Ford 5.4 liter 642 lift. Small block Chrysler LS 647 lift. 580 lift Ford. 5.04 Coyote engine. So this is a 650 lift Chrysler Hemi spring. And again, I'm looking at the difference on the one inch Promot spring. Isn't that crazy? Everything just gets bigger. Hey, if you ever wanted to see what a clutch looks like in an alcohol fuel funny car, this is what they look like. Everybody seems to be watching them cut steel. So is it three quarter steel? They said. It's fascinating, huh? Not. Surprisingly, at this show, I really haven't seen many celebrities around uh, at the show at all. So here's a cutaway of a five-speed overdrive transmission, the Richmond Overdrive, they call it. The gear arrangement's a little bit different than most conventional overdrive systems. 
because you got first gear here, second gear set up over here, third gear over here, fourth is obviously direct with the main drive, and the overdrive section is tucked in way behind over here. So, so, so basically you've got first, second, third, fourth being direct, then fifth being the overdrive over here. And reverse, of course, is in the extension housing in the back on a little kick-out eyelet to the side, a sliding reverse gear like any old T10 on Muncie 4-speed. I just want you guys to see something really cool. This is how you can actually scan a complete transmission case in 3D. Look at this. So this scanner here, tell me about the scanner, what it's doing. These guys are from Capture 3D, okay? It's Garrett, Dane, and Sonia. And what they're doing is they're using this equipment here, and it's on a rotary table, and it's gonna scan this transmission case like this and translate it into a 3D image, which is called an STL file. Isn't that amazing? So what are you gonna do with that, Sonia? Um, I'm gonna get you the uh, actual scan data. This is what it looks like once it's all done. From that to that, and how long do you figure it takes you guys? About, about 30 minutes. 30 hour. minutes. Yeah. To get it all fixtured up and on the rotation table and all the scanners set up. Not a very long time. Nothing is safe anymore. Nothing. <laughs> Take care, guys. Hey, thanks, Paul. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. I just gotta ask you, did you choose the thug life or did the thug life choose you? You can tell us. Chose us. <laughs> The way this machine is machining four cylinder heads at once. Times have really changed. Is this machine? Uh, the machine's more accurate than the plasma, but with your cutting, you're going to get about 0 .001. For 10,000. Wow. That's pretty impressive. How thick in this cut, typically? Three quarters of an inch. Awesome. Thanks. Now, this is a really cool <laughs> shifter. So, this is sequential, with barrel. So this will be in the car normally for the driver, right? You see the way it's rotating? Pulling the gears and also changing. So this would be on the guy's dash. Is it, is it that people literally forget sometimes what gear they're in? Yeah, you don't know unless you're... You, you can tell by the tack, but it's better that racers... Actually can see what gear they're in. Yep. That's how crazy it must get on the track, huh? Yep. Amazing. So when are you going to come out with this setup? Is this going to be available soon? For sure. New whenever I got it. Thanks, Todd. <laughs> this was actually my first camshaft. It was an Iski 750 solid roller on my 327 engine. Wild. And it did have a low Rough idle. this video on surface enhancement, deburring, and shock peening of gears, as well as cryogenic treatment of gears. And speaking of cryogenic treatment, I'm sitting in a cryogenic chamber right now, treating my body. So cryogenics can also improve the integrity and performance of your body as well. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Hey Rhonda, I think this one's done. <laughs>